Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Jamie Spencer. I'm a school-based occupational therapist and a blogger at Miss Jamie OT. Hi, and I'm Tanya. I'm also an occupational therapist and I am a career strategist at Polish to Prosper Career Consulting. So tonight we're coming on to talk a little bit about the hot topic that everybody's talking about, burnout. Burnout in education, burnout in healthcare, burnout everywhere. And everywhere. It, it's really impacting so many people. And I think what's really upsetting is that it's making so many people so unhappy in their lives. And I think it's causing a good thing, which is a lot of self-reflection. So some of the reasons that people are, have been telling us that they're burnt out is productivity standards, really unrealistic productivity standards are everywhere, unfortunately. Yeah. There's a lot of OTs that I know who work in schools that are kind of saying that they're being depersonalized. They might work for an agency where they work. People don't even know their name or yeah. anything about them. You know, so the, a girl was saying to me the other day, she's like, you know, I, I went to work and I've been working there all year and it was my birthday and not one person knew or wished me happy birthday. She's like, you know, because I'm just, I'm not, I don't really work there. You know, I, I'm in, I'm out. And I, it's, it's just, she yeah. was like, she was kind of really upset about it. And I was like, yeah, it, it does stink. Of course you want to go somewhere and have those interpersonal relationships and a, and a, a great work environment. But there are a lot of benefits to that kind of job too. You have to kind of pick and choose what works for you in your life right now. Yeah. And some of the other reasons for burnout is obviously COVID-19. This is, mm -hmm. I'm so over, over it. <laughs> masks, these masks. I want to rip them off. I want to throw them. <laughs> we had one day this week where we were allowed to, um, masks were optional. And really? I, yes, because something, uh, yeah, they, they, they sent us a message and there was a Supreme Court decision and all this other stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, Tomorrow, I know Mm -hmm. masks are optional and I was like so excited so happy and I I couldn't believe it but I went to work and everybody still had masks on I was like uh, one of four teachers that didn't have a mask and I was and you just felt weird did you feel weird I did I kind of felt like I was walking yeah. around without my pants <laughs> <laughs> but, like because I don't been, recommend that by the way <laughs> yeah, it's been, but it, it's been two years and you but it was it was freeing I mean it felt good but then the next day they made us wear the masks again but I'm so over it and it not that it's making me burnt out and question my career but it's 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 frustrating and it's just a stressor that yeah this is I something else to think about and yeah and I feel bad for the speech paths trying to do their jobs with their mouths covered yeah. like that's that's hard you know the facial expressions and the pronunciations and all that I couldn't imagine and, and then I think too about all the parents who are trying to work from home with their kids and trying to make sure that their kids are getting the education they need but meanwhile they're trying to do their job and you know it's just everybody's really juggling and balancing a lot of stuff so the burnout is I think come to ahead which has in a big way led to the great resignation that we talked about in our video last week yeah absolutely so one of the things that we wanted to talk about was how to be in charge of your own life and how to make decisions about what you want and how to go after what you want without kind of being afraid mm -hmm. so a big part of that is your mindset yes yes uh we're tend to when we get to the point of burnout so the best the best advice for burnout is to prevent it before you get to that point. However, with things being thrust at us all, you know, in the last two years, um, my one of my good friends lives across the street from me. He's a PT and he's been working overnight shifts. So he'll actually go in, do his PT shift at the hospital, and then he'll go home and sleep for a few hours and go back and help out because they're so short on nursing staff. Wow. So he's basically being a CNA overnight, getting up and being a PT all day, going to sleep for a few hours. So sometimes these things that we don't have a lot of control over happen to us. So we don't have the opportunity to step back and realize that we are on the brink of becoming burnt out. So if you're at the point where you're just, you're exhausted, you may, you might be depressed, uh, burnt when you're burnt out, it does mock a lot of depression symptoms. You don't feel like doing a lot. You might be in a shame spiral because you don't feel like you have purpose or you don't belong to or, you know where you're working. Or even like you, you might feel like you're not doing a good job. 
Yeah, it's just ineffective. Like, yeah, I, I know that I get like that sometimes when I'm like swamped with paperwork mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get all this stuff done, and I'm like, this needs to be in by this day, and then this, and then this, and then people are asking you, can I have a weighted vest or did it, you know? And mm -hmm. then you submit the report, and there's like a mistake in it, or you you go home and you realize, oh my goodness, I didn't call that parent, and the meeting is tomorrow, and you just feel like, oh, yeah, I stink, I'm awful, but. Yeah, but these things happen, you know, these things happen and a lot has been thrown at us in the last couple of years and yeah. work life balance has been completely thrown off because yeah. we're homeschooling, we're working from home, we're following all these different rules, we can't leave our houses. So the the delineation between going to work and coming home was kind of blurred a little bit because we never left home, yet we were still working. So how do you clock out? You know, you wake up, you don't clock in, you're just at work because you're right. working from home. Yeah. So a lot of things just got blurry. And uh, a lot of us were trapped in feeling burnt out because it just happened so quickly. And it was out of our control. And that's another big part of burnout is you feel out of control. Like you don't have a lot of control over what's happening around you. You control at work. Maybe you're not being listened to by management. You're being, you know, understaffed. You're seeing more patients. Your productivity standards just keep increasing and you just can't keep up. Right. You just get to a point where you're just over it. And I've I've worked with a lot of um, contract therapists that were at that point, mm -hmm. not necessarily in, in my school, but at other jobs. And I've said, so why are you still here? You know, you're so unhappy and you're like on the verge of tears and you have five mm -hmm. reports that need to be written by tomorrow and it's 8 p.m. And you're still, you know, and, and there's this sense of like, I'm obligated to do it all and nobody else can do what I can do. And it's my case and it's my kid. And you never want to do anything that's going to hurt your patient or your, your student, of course. But there is that piece of you're replaceable. And you I, I, had a, I had a story once where I, I had gone to my doctor and he was, you know, asking all the typical questions like, do you exercise? Do you get good sleep? And I was like, no, I don't get good sleep actually at all. And he was, and he was like, well, how's your level of stress? I'm like, pretty, pretty high, you know? And he's like, well, why? And I was like, well, I'm the only OT for, you know, 10 buildings, really six buildings consistently and da, da, da. And he was just like, yeah, but you know, so what, you know, you're an OT, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, but you don't understand. <laughs> like, I, have to, I have to do this and that, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, all these things, and tomorrow this and tomorrow that. And he's like, he goes, "What would happen if you didn't go to work?" And I, I was like, "Well, you, you don't understand. These parents would be so upset." And oh, see, we have a comment. Yep, working, working right party. now, Melissa. No girl, no girl, stop. Eight o'clock <laughs> at night. Close. Grab some wine and. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> Close your report and just mm -hmm. hang out with us instead. Yeah. yeah. Come chill with us. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the doctor said to me, he's like, you, if you didn't go to work and let's say you didn't go to work for a week, what would happen? Would the world end? Would the school close down? And I was like, well, no. And he's like, they would hire somebody else to take your place mm -hmm. and everything would go on. Yeah. He's like, so if you need to take a day, to you know take care of family things i think at the time that that was going on my dad was really sick and i was like feeling stressed about you know i want to go to this procedure but i you know uh you know it just was so much and it weighs on you and he was like that you're letting your stress level reside at like an eight over your everyday job right. and you know and i was like you are so right like i've got to de i've got to compartmentalize and realize that it doesn't all end with me mm -hmm. <laughs> everything's going to go on tomorrow with or without me. And I feel like that takes a little bit of that weight off. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Yeah, no, 100%. And I was, I was raised by a single mother who worked two to three jobs and still to this day works two to three jobs because she's so such a workaholic. And I, it definitely impacted me because now I feel like that's how I was raised. Like you work and you are dedicated to your job and she would miss things to be at work and she would go to work sick and she never used her vacation time. And, you know, if we're conditioned that way from a young age, we don't even realize we're in that pattern yeah. until 2020 hits and you realize, oh my God, I don't know how to just be. That's what happened to me when I closed my brick and mortar, when we went, you know, to the two weeks to get ahead of the curve. And then we didn't go back for however long I, uh, hit this wall. I was like, I don't know how to just be. I don't know how to just exist without work. Um, so that's what 
I that's when I really started exploring intentionality and being able just to be with myself and not have to have a goal or go to work or, you know, do something outside of just being with my family and being present in the moment. So it kind of forced me to slow down. And I think it did for a lot of people. Um, and mindset was a huge part of that. So knowing that you're more valuable than just your career, you're more valuable than just your title or your license number, you're valuable at home and you're not replaceable at home. Right. They can replace you at work, but you know, you can't re be replaced at home. So shifting, shifting your focus and really being aware of once you leave work or clock out, even if you're at home, once work is over, work is over right. and shifting your focus. Nobody's ever on their deathbed saying, oh man, I wish I worked yeah. more. I wish yeah. I spent more hours in the office or I wish I spent more hours completing evaluation reports. Nobody yes. ever says that. No. They say, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I was more present. I wish I took that milestones. risk. I wish I took that risk that yes. I was scared about or went after that goal that I had in the back of my head, but I thought mm -hmm. it was impossible. So that's yes. another thing that I want to bring up is that with us doing our resume and boot camps, a lot of people are reaching out and being like, I kind of want to switch gears and do this, but I, I just, I feel like I'm not ready and all these other things. And I, they, they're nervous and they're fearful. They're scared. They're fearful. And it's like, I, I, my advice is like, do it scared. Just do, do it, it scared. scared. Man. And it doesn't, yeah. again, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to quit my job that I've been at for 10 years and start this whole new thing. You can do, start gradual. You can start you know, get your feet wet in this new area and develop a network of people that you can start to connect with and maybe get some leads. And mm -hmm. depending what it is, I know a lot of people who want to write children's books. I know so many people who there's just so many amazing opportunities that OTs in particular can do because we mm -hmm. have such a, a, a very large skill set. Yeah. And we reach, we work with every population there is. So mm -hmm. I just, like want to encourage everybody to just think of nervousness or fear as nerve excitement. nerve excitement. Have you ever heard yeah. of that? Term? It's the same, it's the same physical response. Yeah. Like it's all from the limbic system. The same hormones are released when you're afraid and when you're excited. So if you just in your brain say, This is my body prepping me for the next thing and not look at it as a look at it, look at it as fear, but look at it, look at it as a compass pointing you towards the next big thing that's lighting you up and making you have this amazing sympathetic nervous response. <laughs> so I have to say it to yourself, like I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm looking into it. I'm yeah. Lit yeah. up, not lit scared, up. nervous. And again, with the all or, no, all or nothing, it doesn't have to be like worst case scenario. What if my job finds out I'm looking into this other thing and they fire me? It doesn't, I mean, what are the chances of that really happening? And then let's look at the best case scenario. What if I start doing this other thing and I am gloriously happy and I make tons of money and I can work only two days a week and be with my family mm -hmm. the rest of the time? Like, you never know. You never know. There's People do it every day. People do it every day. Yeah, they really do. There's this quote. Uh, it was by Wayne, Dwyer, or Wayne Dyer. And I, I always think of it to myself. And it's, he said, don't die with your music still in you because everybody has a gift. Everybody has something that they were meant to share with the world. It might be writing a children's book. It might be opening an ice cream stand. It might be running a restaurant, whatever it is. We all have this passion inside of us and we're really good at something. And don't die with that inside of you because you're meant to share that. That's your gift to the world. Mm -hmm. So you don't get stuck in your hamster wheel. I've been saying that a lot lately. I think that's my new way of saying, don't get stuck in the hamster wheel of your life. You can venture off of that wheel and explore other things. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to quit your full-time position and jump, you know, completely out of your comfort zone, but maybe just take, put a toe out, put a toe out, feel around, see what's out there. There's amazing right. things Thank out here. Come join us out here. <laughs> it's good stuff out here. I promise. Yeah. A lot of the people that signed up for the boot camp and the resume boot camp were in this boat where they were like, I, I really actually want to switch. Some of them were like, I want to switch gears completely mm -hmm. and I want to do sales of medical equipment. And I have no idea how to even do that. And yes, you need to really change your resume to, to target that mm -hmm. position. But then there's other people who are like, I love what I do, but I want to do this other thing on the side, like the creativity. I want to start illustrating children's books. I'm, I love art and I'm good at it. And as an OT, I want to, you know, and it's, it's just that, that beginning step. So what would you say people need to do in terms of that career path? We, we know they need to update their resume, mm -hmm. 
And then the LinkedIn piece is definitely there. Yeah. So if you are either maybe starting a side hustle or even shifting into a totally different, maybe you're going non-clinical or maybe you're, I don't know, doing some, going to another context, maybe you're going from school based to hospital, Right. but you have to target that in your professional documents. You have to align yourself with that environment and that position so that you get the best chances of being called in for an interview. And if you do want a side hustle, um, LinkedIn is the best place to do that because that's where you can connect with other people already doing it. And that's when you can, where you can connect with the potential customers. If you're, you know, starting a handwriting program or creating a course, where better to network and find people who want to learn about those types of things. Right. So no matter what you want to do, you have to align your professional branding documents and your professional brand as a whole with the direction that you're going in. So who you were last year is completely different than who you were this year career wise. You've done more, you've learned more, you have more expertise. So make sure that you're regularly updating these things so that when an opportunity does come, you are not only ready, but you're confident and you know that you can take this next step because you have support of us behind you and your documents are ready to go. And, we're and, super fun. and if the opportunity pops up, you don't have to be like, wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Where is my resume? <laughs> anyway, it's covered in dust five computers ago on my floppy disk. <laughs> I've had people send me like 10 years worth of, uh, just prior positions like screenshotted on their phone because they did had they had not updated their resume in years. So they were just sending me like screenshot here, a screenshot there, and I had to organize it all. Don't don't do that. You know, <laughs> don't do that. Make it's just not easy for anybody, right? It's very stressful. So organize and get ready now because you don't want to wait till the last minute. You want to be proactive. For and sure. then especially now with the way technology has really become ingrained in our world, you need yeah. to make sure that the resume is ATS compliant and that it's going to, when you upload it, it's going to make it through so that you don't end up in the no thanks pile. You want to end up yeah. in the call her or call mm -hmm. him pile right away. That's Absolutely. super important. And that's definitely something I've learned in the past couple of uh, months from talking to you, Tanya, for sure. Yay. Good. Yeah. Glad. Rub it off on you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, people have been asking us about the boot camp. When is it? And we had we were supposed to have it last weekend, yeah. and we were all set. And it might have just happened for a reason. But we're having a nor'easter in New York, where Tanya and I live, and everybody's going to be hunkered down. In. And, yeah. Yep, staying in. So if you want to accomplish something, you want to get your resume done or your LinkedIn profile updated, our boot camps are going to be this weekend now. They're Saturday and Sunday. You can do the bundle if you want, which is both, or you can just do one or the other. We're going to be meeting from 1130 to 130 in the afternoon, morning, afternoon, and going through every single step exactly of what you need to do. So mm -hmm. rather than saying, make sure you have powerful action words in your job bullets. We're going to be giving you the examples. This is the action word that you should use instead of this. Don't use this. You're going to be doing that exactly. We're going to be asking you what your goal is, what you want to achieve, what kind of position you're looking for, what kind of transition you might be going to, and then helping you to make your resume exactly what it needs to be. We're going to end at 1.30, and then you have the afternoon to yourself. You can continue to work on your profile, your resume, and then, of course, do whatever you need to do for the weekend. Go shovel out that snow or <laughs> fill up your firewood. Start your fireplace if you need to because it's going to be a cold one. Um, but then we're going to meet back again at 6 o'clock. So hopefully you've had a t some time to chill out, some time to get some things done, be with your family, do some laundry, shovel. And then we're going to come back at 6 and we're going to recap. We're going to go over everything. And this way, if you had any questions when you were working on your stuff, you can ask Tanya, who's an expert in this field and has been doing this for years, so that when we end at 8 p.m. at night, you can say, I'm done. I finished. It's over. And then when you wake up the next day, like, what a relief. You really yeah. accomplished something this weekend for you, which is amazing and awesome. And you have the opportunity, too, in the afternoon session that if you want to apply for a hot seat, so if you want me to review your stuff one-on-one -on -one during the second half of our boot camp, you can apply for a hot seat, and we will pull up your documents and give you live feedback in a gentle, nice, kind way, of course. <laughs> <Which is laughs> and we're going to see Jamie's videos, too, so you'll see that. I'm not yes, if you buy the bundle, we're giving out my videos of all the things that were wrong with my stuff. 
<laughs> so I have work to do as well because it's it's I think it's a constant process, but it is. It's, it's a living document, both of them, LinkedIn and res resumes. But it's so documents. much easier when you updated it recently as opposed to mm -hmm. you're like, oh my God, my high school job is on here and that's it. <laughs> 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 I'm in trouble. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're also going to be talking about the difference between a resume and a CV. If you're looking mm -hmm. to go into academia, you need an updated CV and a modern CV that's going to make the applicant tra tracking system as well. So that's really important. Yep. We're going to be talking about all that good stuff. So we're also going to be giving resume templates mm -hmm. and examples so you can look at proper properly written resumes in different kinds of fields that people are looking for, as well as cover letters, because a lot of times people will be like, my resume's done, but how do I write this cover letter? What do I say? What do I even put yeah. in? People struggle with the cover letter more in my it's experience. It's a stressor. They just it's don't know what to write on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a stressor. So I, I like that we're including the cover letters in there and then a bunch of other amazing bundle uh, resources too. Um, what, what were the other resources? Huh? Uh, we have the leadership and management interview oh, bundle, which is yeah. full of keywords that you can not only highlight in an interview, but you can also put in your resume because they align with multiple leadership roles or non-clinical roles. Or even if you're, you know, applying for a senior therapist role, you might want some of those leadership terms on your resume to really yeah. set you up for success. And I think that's a good point because I think a lot of the people who've been interested in this are new grads and, you know, just starting out. But what about the people who have been in the same career for long enough and they're ready for this change? Mm -hmm. And maybe that mindset is kicking in of I can do whatever I want. I'm in charge of my own life and I'm ready for this change. But how do I get there? If they're looking for a supervisory position, this interview and management bundle is great. And just mm -hmm. to have that, to have the insight from somebody who's already been there and done it is me. Yeah. And then Joni actually created a job function bullet resource. So if you're struggling with how to quantify your responsibilities under each position, she mm -hmm. created a resource based on each category. So she's like, this is how you, you know, put this into quantitative terms, or this is how you say this accomplishment. So we're giving that away too to really help with those job function bullets. I know a lot of people struggle with you. You always say including metrics in your mm -hmm. resume, which basically just means numbers whatever numbers you can include in your resume are good, whether yeah. they're, you decreased something by a number or you increased something by a number, mm -hmm. just to have numbers makes it much more tangible for the person who's reading it. So yeah. that's just huge. And even if you don't have numbers, we're gonna show you how to highlight the outcome because everything you do has an outcome. There was a result of the action that you took. So how do you put that into your resume that really demonstrates that you make things happen? We're going to talk about that too. So I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah. So we are, again, we're doing the boot camps this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. If you guys are free and you're interested in coming, the link is down here, missjamieot.com slash dream job. You can check out the, the resume boot camp, the LinkedIn boot camp, or both. We would love to see you. And we really are very excited about it. We're going to make it fun. And um, yeah, we made a, we made a soundtrack for it. <laughs> yeah. I made it on Spotify. <laughs> So it's gonna be fun. Yes, it's yeah. I feel like music always sets the tone. You know, mm -hmm. you need that. We I, we should have done some movie clips too. That would have been fun. We talked about doing that. Maybe maybe next time. <laughs> I'm seeing Dolly Parton working nine to five. <laughs> I want to see you dressed up as Dolly Parton acting yeah. out, acting out the music. <laughs> Not gonna work. Not gonna work. <laughs> People would pay for that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, well, thank you everybody who joined us tonight. Yes, thank you. We really appreciate talking about mindset and burnout. And just remember that it doesn't all lie on you. If you didn't show up tomorrow, the world wouldn't end. The school would go on. The hospital would keep chugging along. You can take time for yourself. You can take time to reflect on if you're happy, what you want and what you deserve. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hopefully we'll see you on Saturday. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or you know, chat with either me or Jamie. We're happy to help and support any way that we can and connect with us on LinkedIn too. Yes, and don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends who need to update their resume or LinkedIn profile. All right, have a good Bye, night everybody. everybody. Stay warm and dry and healthy.